Pie of Three All Girls, presented by your hosts, the Blondes, Janelle Yip, Tanya Kvivik, and Emily Childs. Everyone, and welcome to the All Girls Show. Uh, hello, bonjour to everyone in Montreal. Uh, thank you so much for showing up. Uh, this is the second year of this online show, and we are so stoked to be with you guys tonight. So thanks for being here. So who are we? We're the Blondes. We started a ski crew in Revelstoke five years ago, and we started off filming each other. But two years ago now, we actually started filming with a production company. Yep, that was Matchstick Productions, and this year's MSP movie is called Stomping Grounds, and we're super excited to share it with you guys. That's at the Maury Arts Center at 7 p.m. and 9.30 tomorrow, Friday, in Whistler. Awesome. So uh, I'm a skier and a business student. Uh, I'm Janelle. I'm also a skier and a wildland firefighter. And I'm Emily. I'm a skier and a heli pilot. So how are we all doing tonight? We excited? Yeah. yeah. So really excited. Cool. This is awesome. Yeah. Anything you're most stoked for, Emily? Yeah, I'm really excited to watch Learning to Drown. That was one of my favorites that uh, we got to preview. And it's more than a snowboarding film. It's like an inspiring story about what it takes to get to the top and be at the bottom and how to deal with what throws at you. I'm telling everyone to watch this, whether they've ever skied or snowboarded in their life or not. How about you, Tanya? I'm really excited to talk to Spencer about her movie. It's so much passion there, and it's such a real story. I'm just really excited to be able to show this movie and talk to Spencer. And I'm so blown away by the talent this year. Like the films that we got to watch are absolutely incredible by all these badass ladies. Um, so thanks for showing up tonight. Um, we're going to be interviewing some really serious talent, um, some very decorated athletes and the amazing films they've uh, produced and put together for us. Um, and we might even interview each other about the MSP film. Maybe, maybe later. <laughs> um, and yeah, a big thank you to the sponsors of IF3 this year. We've got Steam Whistle, whoop, whoop, and Audio Technica and Red Bull for supporting us. So thank you to the sponsors um, for making this happen. Um, so the movies tonight, um, we've got Wild at Heart by The Outdoor Chicks, um, Shadow by Girls Up, the Telemarker, Telemarkeras intro by We Telemark, Like a Girl, Stark Stale Productions, Deliverance um, by Action Inspired Production, Les Pitotes 2 by Altiscope Films, uh, Learning How to Drown, Felt Soul Media, and Skier Rich by Alex Armstrong. Awesome. So the first person that we're going to interview is actually Robin Van Jin. Uh, and we're just going to show a little uh, intro and teaser of the movie that she's going to show us later on. Chilling. House skate camp? Nice. You think that would be scary? No. I mean, the ocean is my, my biggest teacher everything that I've learned in my life. For me, I find the connection to my heritage in the land. That's when I feel most myself and most connected to where I come from. The attraction to snowboarding for me has always been about the community. I really want to like flip the script on what it means to be a skater and be a part of the community. That was like my main concern, how I was going to be able to snowboard and be a mother at the same time. When I discovered surfing, the reason I loved it so much was because it didn't have rules and it didn't have jerseys and it didn't have winning and losing. There's something really great about being out in the mountains and I think I wanted the education that matched doing that. Because if it's fun, then you're doing something right. I feel like we're all kind of in this area where we want to be saying something. 
we don't really know how. I was taught art black and white. It's modern, it's in a city, it's in a gallery. It became an outlet for all of us to give back and put it all together into one vehicle. The only thing worse than being a hypocrite is doing absolutely nothing. A full year of waste. Indigenous youth need to know that there's opportunities out there. If no matter what it is that you're into, is only representative of one kind of person. And I think that what you have to offer is boring. We're all connected. We're not as dissimilar as people think. Awesome. Do we have Robin here? Hi. Hey, Robin, Hi. how you doing? Pretty good. So stoked Sick. to be here. Where are you at at the moment? I'm actually in Montana and uh, I'm editing, I'm finishing editing the series. So just a quick correction there. <laughs> we won't be showing it tonight because uh, it's not done. <laughs> but I'm working on it. True. So, yeah. That's why I'm <laughs> Perfect. Here in this yeah, we're... Perfect. We're really excited to see it after the festival. Can't wait to see it. Like the trailer gives me goosebumps. It looks absolutely amazing. So tell us a bit more about the movie. Um, it's actually a series. So there's there's five short films, we'll call it, but it's a episodic series. So each of them is about twenty-two to twenty-four minutes. And really, it's just about like contribution through, you know, surfing, skating and snowboarding. And it was came about I, there was just a lot of amazing people around me doing really cool stuff that I felt wasn't really being talked about. And so three years ago, I kind of started to put all the little pieces together. And now we're headed in. We're almost done post. So hoping to release uh, in January and we'll be premiering uh, the episodes in November, December and January. Oh, that's amazing. We're so excited to see it. So I also have to mention that you won natural selection this year, which is insane. Yeah, Congratulations did. so much. Thanks. How did you balance yeah. like making and filming a series and also in natural selections? Well, I straight up did not balance that at all. And I don't suggest it for anybody, <laughs> you know, um, things just kind of rolled out the way that they did. And I kind of had to compartmentalize little pieces of my life to make it happen. And actually being in quarantine for six weeks of the winter really helped me kind of like space everything out and find time to juggle. Uh, it all, but it it did t definitely take a huge toll on the actual snowboarding itself. <laughs> so I'm hoping to do more snowboarding this year for sure. Yeah, fair enough. Well, you crushed it. We all watched it. It was amazing. Do you have some tips on how you calm your nerves on the top before you drop in? Um, I mean, I think I don't know if they're tips for anyone and anyone, but um. I definitely just kind of get in a little bit of a zone. You know, I have a bit of a yeah. routine that I go through a little bit of breathing, a little bit of calming down because I get super amped, um, which never it helps, but to a, to a certain degree and then it's just too much. Um, so I actually worked with a friend of mine to develop a little um, routine before I drop in and just kind of trying to be there and not you know, somewhere else. And just, I think the biggest thing is just remembering that it's, if it's not fun, it's not really working and you can only really do your best if you're having fun. If you're like, you know, feeling a lot of press, stress or pressure, it just doesn't really work. So 
Um, I kind of just had to approach it in a way that had no winning or losing on the other end, but just like going out there and trying to like read the mountain as best as I could and getting to the bottom, <laughs> you know, without any yeah, major problems. Well, you crushed it. And that's some really good advice. Thank you so much yeah. for coming tonight. And we're so excited no to worries. see it's your so series funny. when it comes out. Yeah, so you, um, for the people watching, they can follow um, on Instagram, our.fabric, and we'll be releasing a bunch of dates. Um, we're going to be premiering online with evo.com, so tune in there, and that's where all the info will be on the release of that series. Amazing. Good luck with the rest Everyone of the night. Go do that. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. Okay, see you, ladies. Amazing. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so we got a couple other guests happening right now. And Janelle, you're going to be interviewing the girls from the Approach movie. Yes. Yes, very excited to um, see this movie. Actually, um, it is incredible. Um, and I think we got a little trailer to roll for you guys as well. So let's, uh, let's see that. No trailer. All right, no trailer this time, but we got Ingrid Backstrom um, for our next interview. So where's Ingrid at? Hey, Ingrid. <laughs> Hi. Hey, um, so big congrats um, with the approach. You guys got nominated for best storytelling. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, and last time we did an interview together, um, I think we were on like the North Face Live and two of us were driving and I was working and I wasn't there. So <laughs> really hoping that this this is going to go better this time. So <laughs> thanks so much for being here. <laughs> yeah, it's um, good to talk to you guys and see your faces. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and we were just in Denver along with you guys as well, um, but we just missed you on your film tour circuit. So um, how's it going so far? How's the tour? It's been so awesome. It's been so fun to get back out and see people and celebrate, you know, last winter and get excited for this winter in person with people um, again. And just to see people's reaction to the film has been really cool. Um, it's a different type of movie um, with more stories and a different, more diverse cast than, um, you know, a lot of Shred movies that are out there currently. And I'm excited to see that there's a lot of change happening there. And uh, yeah, it's just been, people have been so, so stoked to see the movie. So it's been yeah, fun it's to awesome share that, that and see, yeah. The energy in the crowd is something we've all missed, I think. So it's cool to get back to that. Um, so you came from being one of the only females like featured in a ski film for so long. And I mean, we were always just huge fans of you. And um, so what could you tell us a little bit more about what motivated you to make this all inclusive film? Yeah, well, I think for so long, I just wanted to see more women doing stuff. Like every time I watched a movie, there's maybe one woman in it and I would be excited for that part. And I love watching guys too. I love skiing with guys. I have nothing against guys. I'm married to one. Um, but <laughs> I just always wanted to watch women shred and there it was, I'd watch snowboarding or surfing or any sports. And uh, I think when I met Anne and saw how rad she was on her skis and with a camera it was like we had to do something together um so we definitely wanted to make a shred film just from more of a female perspective and um then pretty soon into it it was like well if we just make it from our perspective that's only including a small fraction of the people that are actually out there on the mountains so we wanted to bring in um just more diverse people that represented who's actually out there and show other stories of people that are putting different tracks out there. Yeah, definitely. So amazing to see. Um, were there some challenges that you guys faced um, in doing that? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys have probably 
why I'd love to hear your stories sometime too. But um, I think just people are so used to things that being done the same way and uh, that, yeah, it was um, getting funding and getting sponsorship was our main challenge. Um, and yeah, it continued to be the main challenge right up until the end. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys made it happen. Um, watching the movie, um, you guys went to Alaska and got all these guys like down these huge lines. Um, and you're super experienced skiing that stuff. And um, what was it like? Um, did you do some coaching for them? Like, could you offer some experience um, to them to help them like ski a huge face? Well, I think I like to let people experience it in their own way and try not to tell people what to do because everyone has a different experience. And I knew that everyone was such a shredder that they'd have no problem. It was more, um, I think when someone sees an all women's crew roll up in Alaska, they're like, oh, we're going to take you guys to these runs or, oh, you've never been to Alaska before. We're going to take you to these runs. Um, and so just letting everyone know that, hey, these guys shred and we came here to ski cool lines. Um, but I think, you know, within a couple of runs, everyone was like, oh, everyone shreds. OK, so it's just kind of. Yeah, I guess trying to give whatever experience I could without um, trying to drive the experience for people too much, because it's all about letting people experience it in their own way, I think. Oh, that's awesome. That that energy when they get to the bottom of like skiing a face for the first time, that must have been really cool. Cool to see um, their experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun to be with people. Yeah, for sure. When it's a, someone's first time in Alaska, it's amazing to feel that energy. It's like doing it all over again, kind of. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, well, thank you so much for coming tonight. It was really cool to talk to you. Um, and then we're also going to interview um, Anne as well, because um, she was your your counterpart in, in producing this film. So um, we'd also love to hear from her. Hi. Hey, <laughs> so nice to meet you guys. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming. Um, so how did you get into filming? Where did you start? Uh, I started filming in Vermont a long time ago and then moved to Washington to hang out with Ingrid um, and have been filming for like 10 years. But this is definitely the biggest scope of a project we've done. So it's been feeling exciting to release it into the world. Yeah, so much, so much went into it. Um, did you guys um, come up with this creation? uh together um both you and ingrid or how did it start yeah it, we kind of started with the concept of being the token female and checking the marketing checkbox like yes we have a woman we're good to go but like how cool would it be to have more than one woman um and more than one black woman and more than one adaptive athlete in a film um and kind of like push forward because it's so much more fun when we're all together. Uh, but yeah, Ingrid and I came up with this like making pizza in her kitchen years ago and it's been constantly evolving and ended up like this. Wow, that's so cool to see an idea end up like this finally. <laughs> From the pizza to now. <laughs> um, <laughs> my next question, um, when I watched this movie, I, I really, I loved your editing so much. Like I find, um, sometimes ski films, like they don't really do justice, like portraying that like feminine style and like feminine edge. But I just really thought you showed like, like majesty and beauty, like an, a female athlete can have like with the music. And it was just so well done. Did you have any of these thoughts when, while you were editing? Yeah, um, thank you for that. The editing is not perfect, but it's okay. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I just like showing 
like what wonderful characters everybody is. I think that it's so much about the people you spend time with as your crew knows, like you guys are tight and that makes like being out and shredding that much more fun. So I just tried to get footage that was indicative of like all the weird, tiny, funny moments that happen like in building up to all these lines that we ended up skiing. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, really amazing. Um, and also the soundtrack is awesome. Like, where did you guys find those songs and like, were they really hard to license or? Yeah, it that's been such a crazy part. I can't believe music licensing isn't more streamlined at this point, but um, <laughs> all those songs came from music we were just listening to. We had so many like road trips and time together, like hiking and listening to music. So we kind of like built out this playlist of songs we really liked. And then we have like a music licensing wizard, shout out to Florent. Um, and he basically then he's like, hey, can you write a description of the song? So I basically wrote like mini love letters to all these artists. And then they have to like approve whether or not they want it. Um, we tried to work with a lot of black women and like they like this woman, Jamila Woods, whose song is in Brooklyn segment. She's shut us down before for music licensing because our films have been all white people. And when she saw this one with Brooklyn and Emily, she was like, hell yeah, you can definitely use my music for her segment. So that was really special. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, because I was wondering, like, reaching out must make such a big difference, like when it comes from that personal, personal side. Um, so did you guys get the whole crew together for the most time? Or did you film it in separate segments? Um, or were you guys all together? We were missing some key Canadian characters. Um, Leanne was across the border the whole time. And our plan was to like be able and get up and hang out with her and Marie and Spencer and be able to shoot with them and their crew. But I mean, I guess I thought the border would open sooner, but it didn't. And then we were able to get her up to Alaska and we were hoping to get the whole crew together for a second round. But then it was like, we totally got skunked up there. So we just hung out and then went home. Nice. Um, okay, awesome. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your thoughts. Can't wait to see the film for another time. Thank you. <laughs> see you guys soon. Bye. So I think we're going to have a little bit of a commercial break right now. Show all the sponsors.
Sick. That was awesome. Okay, so next up we have Jess Kamira and her film Learning to Drown. Hi, hey, Jess. How's it going? Good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Um, so first off, your film is up for a ton of awards, nominated for Film of the Year, Best Cinematography, Standout Female Snowboarder of the Year, and Best Storytelling. Wow. That is awesome. Um, Thanks. <laughs> it's incredible. And it, I'm not surprised one bit after watching that movie. I was just blown away. Like, you're an absolute legend. I feel pretty stoked to be able to interview you right now. It's, it's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. And thank you for putting yourself out there and sharing with the world your personal story and offering something so real. And I feel like we lack that in this industry and uh, people can really relate to it in their lives in snowboarding and, and not in snowboarding as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the movie is amazing. It's incredible. Can you tell us a bit more about the production team? Yeah, definitely. Um, the uh, production company that made it is called Felt Soul and they're out of Colorado. And um, it's Ben Knight, and um, it, Ben Knight's the one that edited it, and uh, Travis Rommel produced it. So, I, I mean, I didn't know those guys before um, before we made this film. This film was started out as just this idea that I had to make, like, a short YouTube video to just um, talk a little bit about grief and fear and and all that because of how much it helped me when when I was really struggling to hear other people's stories and then North Face took it and just like it ended up with the same production company like these guys made like Damnation and they make all these crazy real serious um, movies and it was I was blown away that they found like when I, I had my first call with them um, like the first conference call I recognized the guy's name or sorry, I recognize the guy's voice because he narrates Damnation, which is on Netflix. So anyways, he's a genius. Yeah, I, I can see that just through. I haven't seen the other one, but I'm going to have to watch it <laughs> just from yours. It's so amazing. Um, in the beginning of the film, you mentioned having a rebel mentality. Where do you think this originated from? Um. I don't know. I, well, okay, maybe I do know. I think it was, and you guys probably, I mean, today I feel like it's different. Right now people are like, yeah, girls. But back then they were like, no, girls, like go. And I think <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they were, that they were like, I was, I don't know. I felt like, I, I don't even know if anyone ever like specifically told me, but I felt like that I was, being told to be a different way, to be a certain way, that if I wasn't a certain way, then I wasn't good enough and that I was only good for this one thing, which is mostly like what you look like um, and to a certain extent what you act like and what kind of things you participate in. And I think that made me mad when I was a kid. Uh, and I just, I think my way of like rebelling against it was just being like, I don't know if we're allowed to swear on the show, but <laughs> screw everything, you know? Or like all of the conventional <laughs> bullshit. Basically, I I don't know that was, that was just my way of saying no. That's awesome. I love that. Um, I'm guessing. I'm not sure if you did, but if you had like an original idea of what the film would turn out like in the start, like when you started filming, and did that change as you worked on it? And are you happy with the final cut? So I didn't work on it. Like literally these guys are, uh, we went, we shot for like four or five days in Mexico and just shot that one interview in one take. And that's then basically like the narration of the whole film. And then I sent him a hard drive of um, my old snowboard footage and a little bit of new stuff. And um, the next time I saw something was maybe 
I don't know, eight months later or something, I saw the first cut, which is the basically what is in the festival. So oh, wow. it was kind of, oh, yeah, it was kind of scary, like not, but I don't know. I just trusted him. I know like Ben, I know he cares and wanted to make something beautiful. And I know that the story like resonated with him too, and he believed in it. So I just trusted him to, to do, but it's definitely like crazy to see my big ass head up on the screen like that. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> For 40 minutes too, it was supposed to be like just a few minutes long um, video, like three minutes, five minutes. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, that was going to be my next question, like the personal film parts. So I guess you did it all in one take. They're like so raw and natural. Was that the first time talking about it? Are you a pretty open person? Like day to day or and was that the most difficult part of filming that was the easiest part like honestly that during that interview I blacked out and didn't even remember what I said and they were all walking around packing up their camera gear like sniffling <laughs> and I was like what? what's wrong with you guys and they were like the interview it was so good and I was like what like I didn't I couldn't even remember what I had said because I just kind of went into the zone of like I don't know. I, I didn't even know what they were going to ask me about. Um, but am I usually a pretty open person? Yeah. Like my friends, they will probably want me to shut up and stop talking about my feelings. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> no, that was awesome. Um, yeah, the movie's about so much more than snowboarding. Um, after years of making snowboarding parts, how did you feel making something that was totally different um well like I said before it really helped me to watch other people's stories um and even to a degree like I I kept feeling like why oh, I'm so stupid why would I there be a thing about me like almost like embarrassed and like I and still now I'm like holy shit this thing's coming out like um because usually you just show that like super tough side of yourself where you're trying to like hang with a crew of dudes on a street trip and just like toss yourself down stuff. So it's definitely different. But like, like you said, like, I don't know, we're all, we're all more than just snowboarders or skiers. And I think that, um, that the next level for us is to show more of that and help other people feel less alone so that like all our struggles and stuff they aren't just wasted on uh, and kept inside us you know like it, it i always said like going through all this shit it sucked but it would suck even more to not try to use it to like help someone else you know that's going through that because it's gnarly yeah thank you thanks for that thanks for all your work you're welcome um one more question. What's what's next? Do you have anything planned? Or are you trying to take a break or a surf movie maybe? Uh, oh my god, yeah, right. Real surfers. Oh, I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm gonna get ripped apart. <laughs> Who cares? Whatever. Um, but uh, no, I'm not gonna make a surf movie. Um, I just made a all girls movie though, The Uninvited Three. Check the t-shirt. Um, when we just put our teaser out today, um, so that's coming out uh, November 30th, and that is what's next for me. Color correction. Oh, that's amazing. I, I don't know how I didn't know that, but that's awesome. I'm so excited to watch it. Um, thank you. Thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. That was Yeah, you're um, welcome. You guys were all love the blonde. To watch it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> amazing yeah so and amazing. i i think we have a friend of ours coming on to the show a friend is a former name? roommate alex armstrong. <laughs> alex armstrong where are you at <laughs> hi hello what's up <laughs> how's it going <laughs> pretty good well, there was sick. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of off brand, but like, you know, cheers. 
<laughs> Where's your beer? It's right here. Dude, I'm ready. <laughs> um, all right. So first off, do you feel rich? Uh, in a lot of ways, yes. Um, financially, never. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, Skier Rich is kind of just is the movie that Emily is referencing. And it, the idea is that you're like rich in friends. You've got all the means to access like cool lines and anything that you can dream of in terms of like the skiing realm. But uh, you spend all your money on that. So, yep. <laughs> rich in life. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, nominated for Standout Female Skier of the Year. Congratulations. Couldn't be more stoked Thanks. for you. <laughs> Yay. Um, so you've always had your dr a drive to be your own producer, even when you signed us up for Intersections with no plan, like four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing some of these dreams come to fruition for you. How's that changed in the recent years? Um, well, definitely coming into any um pitch i have more of a plan um i think i think i always have a plan in terms of trying to have a message or a theme behind it but i also like to live leave a lot of wiggle room for things to occur organically or naturally um and have some humor um in there because i think skiing we're all here to ski and have a nice time and um and like i think one of my favorite things about skiing is that everyone has their unique style and like unique spirit and um just letting that shine through is the important thing so having a plan but not too much of a plan is important tight loose finger tight <laughs> <laughs> tight loose yes <laughs> Um, you skied some really burly lines in this film. Amazing job and congratulations for being nominated. Um, quite the accomplishment. My question for you is, do you have some skiing goals? Did you have some skiing goals for the start of your season? And did you accomplish those? I mean, I think that we always start out with goals. For me, my goal was to be less goal oriented, um, <laughs> ironically. Um, but that's only because uh, two years ago I had knee surgery. So I just wanted to listen to my body more and let that dictate um, how I was skiing versus having these set physical goals, um, like doing a backflip or things of that nature, because I just really wanted to listen to my body and make sure that what I was doing um, made sense for it and I could come through the season um, healthy and happy. <laughs> Seems like you did a good job. So stoked. Thanks, dog. Um, <laughs> last question. How the heck do you and your partner, Max, uh, who filmed and edited the film, date, ski, work, <laughs> and film together? And how do you find and continue to find that balance? <laughs> Um, it's a work in progress always. <laughs> <laughs> I would lie. I would be lying if I didn't say we got into some fights about it. But, you know, from those fights, we realized like, exactly like, where our communication styles are not working for the other person. And we iterate. And I'm really happy that we made it through the season without killing each other. And I think he's pretty happy that we made it through the season without killing each other. And we're going to keep trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I can't wait for everyone to watch this film. I'm so excited. Uh, thank you thanks, for you guys. your time and thanks for coming out. Thank you. You guys are killing it. Can't wait to see you later. <laughs> sweet okay so we got another guest coming on to the show and it's spencer o'brien <laughs> just a little wiggling <laughs> spencer are you here 
Yeah. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. It's been fun to, to follow along and um, check out all the other girls' interviews. Awesome. Yeah, so we actually watched your movie this morning and we're blown away. Like, it's so amazing. I just love that you put, like, education in a way and then snowboarding together. And I've personally always been really fascinated about indigenous cultures. And I feel like you just showed that in a really great way. I was just wondering if, uh, if there was one takeaway that you want people to learn from this film, is there anything specific? Um, yeah, I mean, I think for me, making this film was quite the journey, uh, personally. Uh, I learned a lot about myself and a lot about my family and my heritage and where it fits in for me. Um, but I think for people watching, I think it just with everything that's happening in the world right now, um, with the 215 kids that were, were found um, in Kamloops, and I think a lot of education is starting to happen around residential schools and the intergenerational trauma that's occurred um, is, yeah, just to maybe look around you and, and do a little bit of work on, on educating yourself on Canada's history and what that means, because it really does affect so many people and their families in so many different ways. And, um, you know, my, my and my sister's story is um, just one example of that, um, but there's so many out there. And um, yeah, I think it was just really important for me to share that part of my life and that part of my, my story in a really honest and true way. No, definitely. Like, it was so great. Thank you so much for showcasing that. Really appreciate that. So like the film was incredibly done. Can you tell us a bit more about the background and like the directors or producers? Um, yeah, so Cassie DeCalling uh, was my, is my director and uh, she's from Australia. She actually reached out to me a few years ago um, to kind of make like a 15 minute short film about me. Uh, and, you know, our first thing we, we pitched to, we didn't end up getting and she kind of kept the ball rolling and kept trying to find funding. And, and uh, yeah, she ended up, we ended up with Kiddo Films out of Vancouver, who are our production house and TELUS Originals funded us. So yeah, ended up with a really incredible team. And, I, and I'm so, so grateful to Cassie. Like she really took a ton on and gave me a ton of latitude um, as a subject in a documentary to really have a ton of say around the snowboard segments and, um, and it just about the way that I wanted to film for the movie um, from the snowboard side and, and how I wanted my story to be told. So yeah, really grateful to the entire team and just really proud of what we've come up with. Yeah, awesome. So like you can definitely tell from the movie that it was never easy, like dealing with all these adversities. Do you think it helped you to motivate you and become such a fierce competitor? Um, yeah, I mean, I think every time I was faced with an obstacle or, you know, a, a roadblock, if you will, it, it definitely made me stronger. And, um, I mean, I think one of the biggest ones we touch on in the film is obviously my rheumatoid arthritis diagnosis. Um, and that came at like a really horrible time for me right before my first Olympics. And, you know, as awful as like that experience was and how bad the timing was um you know overcoming that and being able to come back to snowboarding and still be able to do the sport that i love gave me a completely new perspective and, and you know it's something that i wouldn't change for the world so i'm a firm believer in in that our adversities make us stronger and you know we're kind of faced with those for a reason absolutely there's one more thing about the movie that I, it actually gave me tears when your dad ducked under the rope after a crash and he ran up to you and make sure you were okay. Like, it seems like he just really supported you throughout your career. Do you guys still shred together? Um, yeah, we do. Um, my dad's still one of my favorite people to ride with. Um, he absolutely rips in the park and uh yeah he actually lives in whistler full-time and when i'm up there I, I live with him uh so we spent a ton of time together and uh but this winter was really special because we got to take him sledding 
which was pretty fun and he got to get some power runs in for the film and yeah (laughs) but it's pretty funny like he's such a staple in the whistler park like i feel like i go ride whistler and i'll get on the chair with someone and they'll be like oh are you brian's daughter like your dad is so (laughs) sick i'm just like yeah yeah brian's my dad (laughs) (laughs) oh that's absolutely amazing i just love that so much Thank you so much for coming out. And to everyone out there, you should definitely check out this movie. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. And um, yeah, really excited for the film to start getting out there and people to see it. And um, yeah, thank you guys for having me on. This is awesome. Thank you, Spencer. Okay. See you guys. <laughs> okay, so... We have one more guest, and it's actually us, <laughs> which is kind of weird, but we're going to roll with it. So, Emily, do you want to start asking a question? Yeah, I do. Um, all right, so Janelle. Absolutely crushed this past season, and congratulations on Skier of the Year at High Fives Festival, and now nominated for Skier of the Year for IF3. After all that, seems like sunshine and rainbows. Um, Can you talk about some of the challenges you faced this season? Um, Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Great question. Um, I mean, well, you guys were there. (laughs) Some days it was really, really hard getting out there. And um, I think the biggest thing for me is like, I'm just trying to keep up with you guys like all day. And I mean, I feel like this year it like finally clicked for me. snowmobiling but um a lot of the time i'm like just struggling to get up there and like make it to the top like at the same time as tanya and emily because they're just like (laughs) ripping up there and i'm like guys wait wait for me i'm coming so sometimes they have to come back and like dig me out and stuff um so that's a little bit of a challenge um and um yeah just i mean dealing with um yeah trying to to make the best day out of like a really bad weather day and having like tons of expectations for a filming day to go really well. And then for it just to come like kind of crashing down around. Um, So yeah, that's definitely um, a challenging part. And uh, yeah, just trying to always keep a good spirit, even when it's not, not the day for it. And it, and that's, that seems to be like, the biggest challenge that that I've had just like yeah just keeping a good attitude and getting out there even when you're just so frustrated so um yeah and um okay now I have a question oh really <laughs> this is great and weird <laughs> um so Tanya you were nominated for skier of the year at I have three festival and I'm so proud of you you. you had such an amazing season um and I just want to hear about um maybe you had like a moment um this season or last season where you just felt really proud of where you were what you're doing and if you could tell us about that for sure (laughs) actually like the moment that was like the most significant for me was like the day where it all clicked for all of us like the hotel blondes like we made it happen we were up there we were a little bit late but we still made it happen (laughs) I think like Emily started off the day with like the savage line that kind of like it's after your 360, like the big face. And then Janelle has the MSB spines. And then I had that little double drop. And like it was just like such an amazing day because I don't think any of us like actually expected it to be that great, but it just all worked out. And I was really stoked, especially sharing it with you guys. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) yeah. And now I have a question for Emily. So if you don't know, Emily had knee surgery this winter. She had to get her meniscus fixed up. And after five weeks, she started shredding again and throwing 360s of natural stuff and just going massive and skiing big lines. Like, how did you do that? (laughs) Well, um, maybe not after five weeks, I was shredding but i was trying (laughs) um yeah it was actually it was a lot of it was a lot of work Uh, i just 
put my head down and went for it because I knew I mean I could see you guys skiing and I'd be like on the phone like oh that looks that looks fun (laughs) so I had a lot of help so much help from everyone around and thank you for everyone that helped with that and yeah I don't know just I was amazed I think that same day where everything clicked I was like all right we did it (laughs) somehow managed to pull it off but yeah it was it was definitely a challenge that's for sure all right awesome well that uh wraps it up i think that's a wrap that's a wrap that's a wrap we interviewed everyone <laughs> we made it through we're still here <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thank you to all the sponsors again and keep tuning in for i have three because it's still happening uh for the rest of the week and yeah thank you so much for showing up Oh, oh, oh no. Electronic. There's a lot of computers here. <laughs> Sorry, we just spilled the beer everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, keep tuning in for the movies that are coming after this. They're going to be pretty amazing. So, yeah, as you can see, we got Outdoor Chicks, Wild at Heart. Girls Up Shadow. We Telemark, Telemark Gross intro. <laughs> Starkdale Production, Like a Girl. Action Inspired Production, Deliverance. Altscope's Film, I. Lift it, lift it. Okay. <laughs> Felt Soul Media, Learning to Drown, and Alex Armstrong, Skier Rich. They're all amazing. You should definitely keep watching. Thank you so much. Thanks again to our sponsors, Steam Whistle and Audio Technica. Have a great night, you guys. See you later this week. Cheers.